shit but that bounce. I like that. Look, look. Hey guys, it is Parker and I have Dr. Pepper in the trailer. He's been at the fab shop for the past couple weeks and y'all are not going to believe what we did to the cage. We also went to the track. It's going to be a great episode with some sick content, so I hope you enjoy it. Ballin'. Shorty, I was born for the sport. It's just in my nature to get this faithful. Them soft, it's built in their makeup. Show up and show out the Remove my thing. steering wheel. This, so this helmet, I, uh, you know, it's kind of means something to me, but this is the helmet I wore all last year. And if you guys want me to put this into a random order of somebody who buys my merch, let me know in the comments below. I've been thinking about giving it up. I've thinking about been putting on my like wall of you know, collectibles, but I don't know, I'd really like to give it to somebody who would really appreciate having some of my merch. So if you want, leave a comment that says, I want that helmet below and I'll make it happen. Do you want? Okay, oh, do you want to get mics on for this? Three, two, one. Welcome to my dream garage. So yeah, I put out a thing on Sick The Mag's Facebook page. So as you guys know, in 13 days, I think it is, we have sick week starting. So my garage is an absolute mess right now, but I put a thing out on Facebook saying, hey, if anyone on day two is gonna be when we're gonna be at Bradenton Motorsports Park, if anyone needs a lift, I live like 15 miles south of the track. And I gotta say the post is a little bit better than I was expecting. You know, I think like 2000 people have liked it, a ton of comments. I'm like, holy crap, what have I started? But I do wanna make an announcement that this is only for racers in need. I'm not letting people come use the lift if they wanna change their oil, but if you need to pull your trans or you need to do some serious work, I am allowing you know anybody to come through whether I know them or not. You know, with you know, they have to be respectful of the space, and you know, we don't need any burnouts or everyone getting on the trans break, especially with how crazy my HOA is. Let me show you guys a little bit about what I'm doing to prepare for sick week. So, if y'all remember in an older video, this is my Dr Pepper trailer I picked up off Facebook Marketplace like blows my mind. This thing was made out of an old Dr. Pepper vending machine. So this is all like rolled steel. It's um, this guy from the eighties built this and the kid who's, or the grandson actually reached out to me and said that he used to pull it behind his race car. So I'm actually gonna insert a photo here. This is the guy's car that in the exact trailer that he pulled behind his car touring the nation. So I'm super lucky to have it. I've kind of rewired it so that we can get it hooked up behind Dr. Pepper because we used to just throw all of our stuff in the back seat. The suspension was maxed out. It was a rough ride. We knew we had to do a trailer and like literally couldn't think of a better combo between these two. I mean, the paint is pretty similar. I'm just super pumped about it. So I hit up my boys at Built Specialties, which have the best wheels in the game. I said, hey guys, I need some wheels that match the car. So we've got some wheels that we're gonna be running on the trailer and luckily enough, this is the exact same bolt pattern as the front of the car, which is amazing because if that means we only have to carry one spare tire for the trailer and the front runners on the car. I mean, blows my mind and I already have them from previous race week. So I'm getting these mounted up. I, I still got to put some longer uh, studs on here because they're just too short for my liking. I like to have a little bit longer stud. Um, I got the wiring redone so that it'll just be plug and play with the Deutsch connector instead of like a four pin. You can see I got it already done on the trailer side, so I just need to finish it up on the car side and then this thing will literally be ready to rip. So this is a Motion Raceworks parachute, which has been the biggest safety improvement I've made on the car since I bought it, other than the brakes and the roll cage. And uh, you know, it fits into a sleeve that's mounted on the actual rear bumper frame underneath the car. And so what we're gonna do during the race weeks is we'll actually pull the parachute out when we're ready to leave the track slide the hitch into that same receiver and then we'll be able to hook up to the trailer. It's like the best thing ever. So I'm really excited about that. Not sure how we're gonna mount like tires or anything on it. I'm thinking we're just gonna put like the tires here and then have my two race tires on top of that and then load it full of the fuel and the toolboxes and all that crap that goes in there. Okay, so Sam and I went to the track together. So let's cut to some of that footage because that'll explain some of the issues we're working through to improve this thing. You gotta take your two-step as soon as you get to the track before you go to the line. We were making about seven pounds and our target's about 3,800 RPM. So that's perfect. Three 
previously we were having an issue where we were building too much boost and it wouldn't level off and that's because there was two wastegate springs so it was trying to climb to like 10 11 12 psi sitting on the brake no matter what dome pressure we were throwing at it so we took out one of the springs guys we got mr mustache back in the back in the garage we're pulling apart these wastegates all right we're pulling out the springs basically the car has about 12 pounds of wastegate pressure with these two springs combined and so it's really hard to control the boost or anything under that so i hit up tim mccallum he's the one who hooked me up with the big turbo that we have as well he got me set up with these wastegates and they have 12 pounds of, or 13 pounds of spring in them both of these combined this one's seven this one's six so we're going to be taking out the big dog and only running the smaller one so we can get a little bit more control on the car while these are out we're also going to kind of lube up these o-rings and the shafts as well put some grease on there so that these things don't bind up sam and i out here at testington ready to do our first lick Got the car right down here. First in line, there's a couple what cars back here. Bunch of cars. Cars. We're ready to do it, it is a beautiful evening. Look at this sunset, Sam. Oh, what a view! Woo. What a view. On the first run that we did, we were running, what, 16 pounds max, and we left on eight. So we're gonna leave on eight again, but ramp into 20 pounds of dome pressure, about two tenths of a second. We also added a little bit more ramp in here too. So, ready to do a lick? We're ready to go, let's go. Let's go. Uh, I think Chad's gotta do his first run first, oh. right? All right guys, kind of funny story here. This is my buddy Chad, and he bought this Mercedes AMG. And he told me like two months ago, he's like, hey, I'm looking for something kind of cool to drive. And I texted him, if you buy a Mercedes, I will never talk to you again. Well, he bought a Mercedes. You ready, brother? First rip down the track. Let's go. See what she can do. You're going to run into the eighth? What are you doing? Yeah. No burnout? No burnout. Okay. Uh, don't forget to record the crash. Don't forget to record the crash. Did you get your nervous pee out? Uh, it may happen on the track. It actually. may happen on the track. Yeah. Don't get the pee on the leather seat, dude. Hey, scoot up, scoot up. There you go. Good job, brother. He only ran her to the eighth. He's still getting the bug style out in his head, you know? Hey, I'm glad he's out here letting it rip. Good for him, right? by three times but I had to race him. I, I had know, to race I had to go and with I him. beat him and I beat him. Not much improvement Sam. 12662522 for the eighth. That's so oh. I'm thinking well, turn the leave up. Turn the RPM up. Maybe a pound of boost on the leave. Just go ahead with it because it looks like it's good leaving. Yeah. Okay I got a little excited on pass number two because there's a guy in a donk next to me he red lit and so i saw him leave and i was like i gotta race this guy so i left a little bit after him red lit as well but still came around and beat him so i'll take that w game plan for this next pass is we're going to leave on 200 rpm higher we're going to leave on a pound and a half higher and we're going to we lower the shift rpm down 200 rpm because you can actually see when it goes from like 7000 to 7200 the g-force is dipped down so we know we're losing power in that area so we're Oh, what's 
he gonna do? See how fast he went, did you? 11s. You went 11? First, first, first time, I mean, second time up and you run 11s. And over 100 mile an hour? Way over 100. Oh, he's gonna be pumped well, about that. Let's, let's go, yeah. nice. Chad's second time down the track and he went over 100 miles an hour. I'm pumped for him. Nice work, Chad. That had to feel a little faster, huh? It was much better. Yeah, yeah. let's see what you did. All right, 113 miles an hour and 11.45. smart coils on before we heard it by leaning yep. it out or something crazy okay so now that y'all understand that we're having a breaking up issue still i increased the pulley on the alternator so that it doesn't overspin it and we're corrected the voltage there however it's still breaking up so we hit a poly even though i had these super sick coils that would literally have a little led flash they're made by everyone's been asking me i think it's phytech but basically every time it sends a signal to the to the spark plug it, flashes a blue LED. So I got some uh, Holly Smart coils. Everyone's telling me like, you gotta upgrade your coils. So I did. So let's cut to some of that footage of me getting these on. I got some, you know, custom made 8.5 millimeter spark plug wires that, you know, were kind of cut to length. So I'm getting all those wired in. We're also gonna decrease the plug gap and see if that helps. If we're still running into issues, then it might be a fuel issue. Um, hopefully we can get another track, one or two track sessions in before race week or before sick week. But, oh, let's check out the cage. Let's check out the cage. Technically I'm running the eighth mile class, but I'm gonna be running at speeds probably faster than 550 to the eighth or if not sub five. And I know I need a hoop. So we got a funny car hoop in the car. My boy, Jeff Ray did this. You guys can check out his Instagram. I'll put a link in the description, but we did a funny car hoop and we also crossed the doors. I have some carbon fiber sleeves. We're gonna be putting over the, uh, the bars here. These are kind of cut to length and they allow us to you know, get in and out without wearing off the rattle can paint. Oh, before anybody says anything, I do have SFI padding we are gonna be putting on the roll bar or on the funny car hoop because if you hit your head on it, from what I understand, a lot of injuries and deaths occur in these roll cage cars because your head actually hits a roll bar. So these are SFI 45 one, I believe. We're gonna you know, put these on the roll bar so that we don't have that issue of hurting ourselves. But I was getting some comments on Instagram about the funny car hoop being too big. And so let's go look at this thing. It is, it is big when I first looked at it and you all had me worried, but I'm gonna show you on camera that I can get in and out of it. We're gonna try it right now. I'm gonna put my helmet on, I'm gonna get in the car. I'm gonna practice getting out, but I've been able to get in and out of the car a lot easier than I expected to. And I'm gonna show you guys, we're gonna try it right now. This gets a little, little tight in here. It's definitely tight in here, but we're gonna put that padding in here. Make sure it keeps my head nice and solid. I'll be wearing a Hans device, but let's put the helmet on and simulate getting out of the car because you know that's obviously really important. If something unfortunate were to happen. Okay, so my emergency procedure, if something unfortunate were to happen, were to be to, you know, dump the parachute, obviously, hit the emergency stop button right here, which is a big red button that kills everything in the car, remove my steering wheel, Voila, not too bad. 
So for all those haters out there saying that it's too tight of a space, it's not. The last few things I have to do before we head back to the track are put the coils here on a relay. They require a 70 amp relay. And then I'm also replacing all of these vacuum lines. Traditionally on these turbo car setups, you have these vacuum lines that go to the wastegates in the turbo. And that helps regulate how much pressure you want to make or how much. And these help manage how much boost you want to make. But I'm actually switching them out to stainless dash four. So this will clean it up. It'll make it a little more heat resistant because there's nothing more frustrating than one of these lines rubbing up against something that's hot and they melt. They're literally thin wall, quarter inch plastic tubing junk. So switch into this, finishing up some wiring, and then we're pretty much ready to hit the track. So I'm, I'm pumped. Okay, so my wheel and tire combo setup for our sick week is looking something like this. We have the front runners or the, the trailer tires and wheels that you know match the front of the car. We're gonna carry one spare that doesn't match that we could swap onto either the trailer or the car. And then on the rear, we're gonna be running the 235 tire. This is a uh, you know billet specialties wheel double bead lock. So it has the V lock on the inside and the outside. And then I have a single bead lock on the back of the car for street driving. And we got some ET Streets SS's that actually have some tread on them because last year we hit a ton of rain. And uh, you know, if we run into water, I want to have some tread on the rear tires. So these will be on the trailer as we're driving from track to track. These will be on the car. These are a single bead lock. I don't need a single bead lock, but it looks super sick. So, you know, you gotta look cool while you're out there. So we got the Dr. Pepper trailer. We got the wheels, we got the fresh paint. We're ready to rip. Thanks for watching guys. Make sure you subscribe, like, leave me a comment. We'll see you on the next episode. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you've been wrenching on your car, need a 10 millimeter wrench, plowing a bag of flaming hot Cheetos and drinking a Dr. Pepper and realize, dang it, I really need to brush my teeth. Well, now's your chance. I'm talking Dr. Parker 10 millimeter tool brush, a toothbrush on one end, a 10 millimeter wrench on the other. This sucker, CNC billet aluminum, baby. Lifetime warranty. Get them now at CletusMcFarland.com.